Right, let's move on to some news. And before I get to a really exciting new addition to the already hyper competitive naked sport bike class, I need to confirm something that I mentioned in our news roundup from last week. Remember the Top Mountain Museum and its amazing collection of classic bikes and the fire that engulfed the building, the highest museum in Europe at almost 2,200 meters? Well, it appears that the destruction was complete. No bikes survived, and as you can see from this footage posted to Facebook by Carol Berger, all that history is indeed gone. What a genuine tragedy. Perhaps not totally unforeseen though, since allegedly, that wonderful wooden building with its many, many millions of euros of rare bikes didn't actually have a sprinkler system. Whomever scrimped on that particular budgetary option during the construction probably now needs to go into hiding. Anyway, from the depths of sadness to the heights of happiness with a new model announcement from Triumph, there is a new speed triple. No, really, I, I mean a properly new speed triple. If you're anything like me, then those words will probably leave you going, so what? For so long now, and I do mean long, it must be way over a decade, maybe nearly two decades since the Speed Triple has had something truly interesting done to it. That's not to deny its almost legendary status. After all, it was pretty much the first official Street Fighter type of sporty naked bike when it appeared back in 1994. Plenty of manufacturers have subsequently jumped on the bandwagon so that now we have hugely powerful, cutting-edge naked superbikes from just about every brand on the market. 200 horsepower in a naked bike doesn't really even raise eyebrows anymore. That means Triumph's Speed Triple, lovely as it was, now felt a bit gutless really and more than a little stodgy in the handling department as well. Triumph says those new bikes that are essentially superbikes turned into nakeds are actually compromised. Well, I can sort of see what they mean in terms of being road rather than track bikes, but it's what many of us sport bike riders have so long been asking for. So, yeah, whatever. I do get where they're coming from. It's the same sort of line you hear from KTM with regards to the Super Duke R. It's been designed from the get-go as a naked bike, and that's not exactly a boring model, is it? And neither, I'd hazard a guess, will the new Speed Triple 1200 RS be boring. It's actually now 1160cc, up from the previous 1050, and is obviously still an inline triple. Power is now up a good 30 odd horsepower or so over the previous model at 178 horsepower. That makes it essentially the same as the Super Duke. A handful more than Aprilia's V4 Tuono, and about 15 or 20 more than the likes of Yamaha's MT-10 and BMW's new S1000R. No longer will we have to make any excuses for the Speed Triple's weedy horsepower numbers. Weight has been chopped by 10 kilos, so overall the power to weight ratio is up by a whopping 25%. There's some snazzy, fully adjustable Olin suspension front and back, and a set of Brembo's awesome Stylema calipers for maximum braking performance. Of course, there's also plenty of electronics with five riding modes, up and down quick shifter, keyless ignition and fuel cap, a lovely five inch TFT dash and LED lighting. Overall, the looks of the new Speed Triple R, I reckon, absolutely spot on. It still looks substantial, aggressive, but also sleek and curvy from some angles. I can't wait to see it in the flesh and obviously have a ride. Looks like I'll be waiting until at least March when it will arrive in European dealers, with pricing that suggests it could well be around the 300,000 Rand mark when it arrives in SA. Right, after this next very short break, Don talks rubber. 